The approach I took when writing Population 485 was to write about joining the local volunteer fire and rescue service, and uh, that's how I rediscovered New Auburn. And since the book has come out, I've received a large number of emails and letters from people saying, we just loved your book about the small town. As a matter of fact, we loved it so much, we sold everything and we moved back. And I just go, well, hang on there, Spanky. <laughs> Because small towns can also be difficult places. They have long memories and you can be 50 years old trying to live down something that happened in the gravel pit when you was 15. <laughs> um, and even when you go back of your own free will, as I did, and I was eager to return and, and in the end it was a good decision. I was very happy back there. Nonetheless, you're not sure if you're making the right decision. And, and in my case, uh, one of the reasons I wasn't sure is that I was not the same guy when I went back as I was when I left. I like to say that when I left New Auburn, I was a farm boy, a good student, and a fair defensive end. I returned 12 years later a long-haired writer with soft hands and a nursing degree. <laughs> so there was a certain amount of street cred to recover <laughs> with some of my buddies in the coon hunting crowd. <laughs> I've since had to update the anecdote specifically as it relates to the long hair. Um, <laughs> for years I had long hair, waist length. And there are two reasons that I no longer have long hair. And the first, sadly, is just generalized crop failure. <laughs> got to the point where there was no point. And, uh, <laughs> and it had started to get real thin on top, uh, and I got to thinking maybe I should cut it off. I hadn't made the move yet, but I thought, you know, I'm kind of headed for the Brendan Franklin look here. <laughs> and, uh, but I hadn't made the move, and uh, we got paged out to fight a grass fire. And I was right up in the teeth of the flames, knocking it down, fighting from the black, as any well-trained wildland firefighter will tell you that you must. But I was right up in there knocking it down and all of a sudden one of the other firefighters ran up and started patting me. <laughs> now normally, you don't get a lot of that. Uh, so I said, what are you doing? And he said, man, your hair's on fire. <laughs> and indeed, it was crackling right along. Uh, so at that point, I thought, you know, if it ain't bursting into flames, uh, it's falling out, I might as well just cut it all off. So, um, so when I moved back, I was looking for a little science to tell me whether I made the right choice. And you know, I get asked all the time in interviews, did, was it difficult for you to find your place back in your community? And the short answer is no. Um, and one big reason for that is that I was still living off my dad's good name. He's been there. 42 years and has yet to bounce a check. So uh, that helped a lot. And uh, also the truth is, as long as you jump off the fire truck and run in the burning barn, they really don't care what you do in your spare time. <laughs> um, but there were a couple of setbacks. Uh, one of the ones that I wrote about in Population 485 is that uh, I was a bachelor when I lived in New Auburn most of the years there. And I lived in an old house on Main Street. and. As a bachelor, I kept a relatively neat house. I wouldn't say I was overly aggressive about it. Um, and I would dust at least once a year. And I didn't like dusting, and so in order to pass the time while I was dusting, I'd always play old country music albums and sing along at volume. And one day I was cleaning, I was dusting there with my little yellow feather duster. And I was singing along to the best of Donna Fargo. And, uh, you, all of a sudden I got that sense, you know, where you feel someone's watching you. And I looked up and the town maintenance man had been knocking on my door and looking through the window at me. Uh, he had come to fix my water meter. And I was embarrassed because he caught me with my little feather duster and singing along to the Donna Fargo album. And then, and then I realized what song I was singing and a chill went down my spine. 
and I wondered, what does this maintenance man think of this fellow, new to town, armed with a feather duster and singing at the top of his lungs, I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. <laughs> But anyway, so you're looking, uh, you're trying to fit in, and uh, you're looking for science to tell you whether or not you made the right decision. And about a, the biggest event of the year in New Auburn, population 485, is Jamboree Days. And Jamboree Days consist basically of a five minute parade and a softball tournament. And the proceeds from the softball tournament go to support the local uh, park. Uh, and so as members of the volunteer fire department, we're expected to pitch in and help run the show. Uh, so we help run the softball tournament as, as a fundraiser. And then directly adjacent to the softball field is a beer tent. And truth be told, that's where the majority of your hardcore fundraising occurs. <laughs> So about a year after I moved back, uh, the other thing about this softball tournament is that New Auburn has only one softball field, and at the time of the anecdote, no lights. And the tournament has become very popular over the years, and so in order to get everybody through the brackets, they have to start playing softball at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. They play all day long until dark. They resume play at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning and play all day long until the tournament has been resolved. So about a year after I moved back, I got assigned the duty of going down to the park on Sunday morning to clean up the beer tent. And they sent me down there with one of the old timers on the department. And we got down there, it was about 8.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. The first softball game of the day was already underway and we're in the beer tent picking up paper plates and plastic cups and napkins and this guy wanders in off the street. Not a softball player, just a civilian. And he says, can I get a beer? And I looked at my partner, I said, well, it is 8.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning, uh, but you've been on the department longer, you make the command decision. And he says, well, I guess there's no law against it. So he goes around behind our little makeshift bar there and he draws the guy a beer and he sets it down. The guy hands his money over and he puts both elbows on the plywood and he raises the beer to his lips and he's just about to take a pull at the foam when he hears the crack of the bat on the softball field adjacent and he freezes and then he looks and then he brings his lips back in line with the beer which has not moved and says a little early in the morning for softball <laughs> And it was at that point that I said, yes, I am back among my people. 